all the conference uh, have been very interesting and uh, high high level. <laughs> I will try to maintain the level of Dr. Beloki and Dr. Martin. I don't know if I will get it, but okay. <laughs> Many thanks for esteemed staff on the conference on astrophysics and space research 2020 organization for allowing me to be here. It's a great pride to be present in this high level forum, especially for a health worker like me, a dentist, to speak in an auditorium full of specialists for, from so many branches of science, all of them probably much more fundamental in the world of astronautics than, than ours one. Okay, I'm Dr. Victor Euro from University of Barcelona. As I have already said, dentist, among other things, specialized in aerospace and underwater dentistry, topics on which we have based my doctoral thesis and published two articles and a third one in a publishing step. The organization asked me a few months ago to do a short presentation of one of them and we were conducted a systematic research uh, to the correlation between microgravity and known oral pathologies. I will try to make this presentation enjoyable and understand, understandable uh, as well useful as possible, okay? Uh, why did not another problem? Ah, that's it. First of all, I want to say that it's true send satellites, robots, and robots vehicles to, to Mars, asteroids, and ever further places is an historical, scientific, uh, of course, and technological milestone. But I think we are all aware that humanity, especially those of us who love adventure and the history of human exploration, think that the ultimate purpose of exploration is to see men and women being in these new origins. That for us, health workers to provide all available information on possible medical contingencies and in this case dental ones in the circumstances in which they our astronauts are going to travel it's also forced us to seek preventive measures front of possible pathologies situations or emergencies which can affect a member of the crew or why not the entire one both always, always both for astronauts' physical security and, of course, to ensure the success of the mission, because safety and success are linked together always. The problem for us is that our research team a few years ago saw that dentistry since the 60s has evolved and didn't participate in the space race. The protocols and emergency dental kit currently used by space agencies have not changed significantly since 60s or 70s. And it's obviously that dentistry has advanced light years since then. It's important to say that current emergency kits and protocols are relatively useful in LEO missions, where the primary solution to dental and medical problems is evacuation but it's obvious that evacuation will not be possible on long missions such as, for example, Mars mission. I'm not naive. Dentistry is not the key or the center of aerospace exploration, but it's a piece of the grid machine that must be made to work perfectly so that one day that journey becomes a reality. To focus on the subject, and given that you are not dentists, I want to explain in a very superficial way the possible ev uh, evolutions of oral pathologies usually treated without further problems here on the ground. In the first place, a uh, simple carious cavity without treatment will grow until it affects the dental nerve, appearing an irreversible pulpitis that produces a lot of pain, so much pain that is often considered incapacitating. This progress always into necrosis of the, of the dental nerve and an apical abscess could appear, more pain and facial phlegm. It could progress under the tongue and producing a Ludwig angina. And this is so, so dangerous because it's the last station before the mediastinitis infection, the third one, and this is the, the last one the, you can get. 
In the other hand, gingivitis evolution is a periodontitis that it's possible also that progress with an incapacitating pain. But the most important thing is that periodontitis is that create a similar risk general bacteremia as a ulcer, the size of the palm of your hand, you know? And it should be noted that in a prior paper, we already studied the incidence of dental problems in different levels of isolation situation uh, here in the air. We, we were able to observe how, among other things, the evacuation rate of isolated people was very, very high due to dental pathologies. We put several examples. We could observe how one of the main causes of evacuation in the military situation most similar to a spacecraft, a spacecraft, sorry, submarines, were dental problems. In our understanding, most of them preventable and treatable. And here in, the, in this slide, you can see the following examples. Caries, cavities, endodontic problems, fractures, uh, thermal problems, periodontal pathology, and, and many others. Uh, the lowest dental incident rate of all of these was found in summer emissions, 2.39 per thousand person per year. And in a long-term installation conditions, if we plus submarines and Antarctic missions, the dental incidence rate uh, increase uh, to 4.12 per thousand person year because they have harder crew selection. But it's no, not enough, in fact, because all of that dental problems needed evacuation. And it's a problem if we want to go to Mars, for example. Dex et al. found that non-injury related dental problems accounted the 6.9 to 9% of all medical evacuations from submarines between 91 to 99. And Gunepen et al. found that 15% of the medical evacuation recorded in soldiers deployed in Mali were to treat non-battle dental emergencies. Also, the conditions are different, but the evacuation percentage ads are similar, showing that dental evacuation are independent of the mission conditions. These data demonstrate the need for dental equipment and, train, and training dental personnel to address the dental conditions. Uh, with this previous data, no one will be surprised that according to NASA's integrated mathematical medical model where it simulates high impact medical events in missions too far to Mars, dental emergency are in the top five of the medical contingencies that can jeopardize the mission. I will go on uh, to the list, analyze dental problems and predisposing, predisposing factors for dental problems found in microgravity conditions specifically. You, you, have, you have there in, in, the, in the slide, the increase of anaerobic microbiota in dental plaque, as well as the increase of mycoplasma in saliva is relevant. One of the problems associated with the increase of the anaerobics is the increment of dental calculus and gingival inflammation post-flight as compared with the pre-flight values for all the Skylab missions and was observed for all missions and in all crew members crew members. According to Skylab experience, the period in which the anaerobic increase was 56 days in space microgravity. So in periods of more than 56 days in space, it would, it would be essential to design a contingency plan. The increase of Bayonea is in plaque would represent up of 45% in the initial stage of gingivitis or associated periodontitis. The increase of Fusobacterium is a direct bacteria pathogen involved in the genesis of the periodontitis. The relevance of the periodontitis problem, another time, is evident when we considering that in a patient with a moderate periodontitis, the, the surface of the periodontal bag in direct contact with the bacteria plaque is about 72 square centimeters approximately, how I say uh, after the size of the palm of the hand. 
and the increase of streptococcus mutants were found on almost exclusively in plaques collected from dentin caries lesions. We also observed the increase of different physiological factors that predispose to oral pathology. In long period scale admissions two, three, and four, we saw an increase of EGA in a study of a scale admission secretory EGA increased persistently during chamber confinement and reached a maximum level also to the 55th day of sampling. Salivary proteins include secretory EGA and other substances like agglutin, mucins, and proline rich proteins that affect the oral biofilm for information. These proteins promote microbial, microbial adhesion because the salivary film and its constituent proteins bind to the teeth and mucosal membranes. On the other hand, secretory EGA antibody and serum EGG this der derived from the gingival crevicular fluid influence in the accumulation of cardiogenic microbiota at various stages of the infection. Salivary glucosyl transferase B levels were increased in microgravity conditions compared with the normal conditions. These glucosyl transfer enzymes are essential for the expression of virulence of the streptococcus mutants in the patho pathogenesis of dental caries. It is, good, it is good to remember that the Russian cosmonauts, for example, reported an, an incapacitating dental pain during the last two weeks of his 96-day flight aboard in Salut 6 mission in 78. The increase of MMP8 and MMP9 is attributed to the reported increase of metalloproteinases in the onset of collagen destruction in the periodontitis. And only one case of a crown displacement was found in the space microgravity. So, in summary, we can see that the main problems described are the high increase in risk factors and prepathological pre conditions that lead to the appearance of dental caries and mainly gum diseases. Therefore, the probabilities of su suffering dental events during a trip to Mars are not zero. It is a real risk. It is obvious that it will be necessary to provide prevention protocols and personal selection, including the perfect oral health status, ideally for, in, in my opinion, without previous dental treatments, such as reconstructions, root canals, or crowns, and especially special treatment protocols on board, in addition to the appropriate machinery for dental treatment in that conditions. We believe that preventive treatment and rapid emergency treatment is early stages is simpler and therefore more realistic for the mission medical officers, officer who we all understand that will not be a dentist. In some circles, we have heard that teeth are not so important and that if the case comes, we extract them and, and that's it, no problem. But that idea has two serious mistakes. One, assume that the dental extraction is a simple and risk-free procedure and, and it's, not, it's not true. And second, but possibly more important, astronauts are medicated with, with bifosphonates, very useful drugs to prevent the loss of bone density. Dentists, all dentists know that taking bifosphonates and dental extraction result in a high incidence of maxillary bone necrosis. And this is, that is very difficult to treat and very, and very, very dangerous. We believe then that the creation of a simplified techniques to solve these initial problems are the basis for the success of the mission. We believe that it's necessary to adopt a specific preventive measures for astronauts, training health personnel who are on the mission in the prevention and treatment of oral health events and providing special dental equipment, something that we are currently working on then. And for example, plausible solutions of the observed dental events exist. Uh, for periodontal problems would be easily solved by training the onboard medical officer in a dental hygiene with a cavitron, normal cavitron, and requiring the crew 
to receive routine professional hygiene added to an extreme daily personal dental care, of course. The use of these chairs splints in a routine way would dismiss the bruxism secondary to the stress in different conditions, thereby dismissing the incidence of dental fractures and article, articular pain. And another time, training mission health officer to treat small cavities before the complexity, complexity increase the technical difficulty of the treatment. And in conclusion, future long-term mission to Mars or to space stations will require 18, 24 months of exposure to mercury conditions or more, which could have potentially deleterious effects on human physiology, including oral health. Our review showed that in missions in microbiology, physiologic, physiologic changes and these oral health alterations could jeopardize the success of long period missions by causing oral and systematic pathologies. Consequently, it will be necessary to adopt specific preventive measures and over time to train the personnel to deal with oral health events and to employ special equipment in a long term missions. So in summary, we can see that the main problems described are high increase in risk factors and pathological conditions. Uh, that's it. I know it's a short, the shorter one, but I believe that you enjoy it. It's uh, the time for, for the questions, if there are anyone for dentists. Okay, thank you, Victor, for the very nice talk. And uh, any question for Victor? Well, you actually uh, deal with uh, a very uh, a great problem. <laughs> you, yeah, you I know. know. I'm a dentist, I'm not an engineer. It, it's normal that, that there are no questions about it. It's it, the, the only thing we can, with, with oh, sorry, an emergency. Dental emergency? No, <laughs> and it's it's real that it's only one a little piece of uh, of the long term mission. But all of us, I believe, all scientists of the world need to put the, our little help to to reach uh, another another big uh, step uh, in this in this experience, yes. this the aerospace exploration. You know. Yes, yes, you're right. And uh, actually, maybe what we can, uh, what we will uh, do in the future. So for you, uh, for example, for the Mars mission, and we will uh, resolve it uh, in, uh, in some way we have to resolve. Because ah, if that's not, true. Uh, I, the Mars mission could I believe be a problem. We will resolve this. The, the, the most important is that that aerospace uh, medical crew knows that dental problems are could be a problem and that's it the solution is is not difficult but we need to think about it you know that's uh, that's only the point and also all the other health problems that could uh, that could come during the mission yeah of course because here in in the earth we only believe that a cavity is not important because you can go to the dentist. <laughs> that is not a very big problem. But if you stay two years doing uh, around Mars, it could be a, a very big health problem because, in fact, you can death with a uh, with a starting cavity. Yes, I saw the mm, several photos. So <laughs> <laughs> quite impressive. Yeah. I know. Bye. Okay. If there are no questions, thank you very much again. Thank you very much. See you. And see you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.